Okay, hi, my name is Ethlyn, and today's presentation is going to be on operating touch screens and some tricks to using them. Um, today we're going to cover an intro to touch screens, such as why it's helpful to learn the proper gestures for them, uh, a few touch screen devices, and a summary of how to use those devices. So first we'll be doing an intro to touch screens. So a touch screen is the assembly of both an input and an output device. The touch panel is usually layered on the top of an electronic visual display of an information processing system. So in simpler terms, a touch screen is a screen that picks up the heat or the pressure of your fingers and it responds to your touch in the place of a button. Um, in this day and age, touch screen devices are becoming more and more commonplace and they can include smartphones, tablets, computers, TV screens, um, electronic menus, payment readers, and a lot more. What are touchscreen gestures? So touchscreen gestures are the different ways in which your fingers can interact with your screens, uh, your device's screen. And um, different gestures can provide different results. Like for example, uh, there's tapping, which is you just touch, touch it with your fingers. There's double tapping, which is when you click twice uh, rapidly. There's dragging, which is when you move your fingers over the surface without lifting it. There's flicking, which is quickly like brushing the surface with your fingertip. Um, there's pinching where you use two fingers and then bring them closer together. There's spreading, which is the opposite of that, where you have them close together at first and then bring them apart. There's pressing, whereas uh, you touch the surface for a long, like an extended period of time. And then there's like a press and tap, which is when you like press the surface with one finger and then you briefly touch it with a second one. So uh, to tap the screen, you briefly touch it with your finger. You can open apps and select links and other options by tapping on them. And it's the equivalent of clicking a mouse on a computer. Um, swiping is placing your finger near the middle of the screen and then quickly moving your finger to the left, right, top or bottom with a fluid motion. And this will cause the screen to change from one page to another. Tap and hold is just as you think, which is where you just tap the screen and then hold your finger down for a moment. And by tapping and holding an app, you can delete it or you can create folders. Uh, for dragging, you tap, hold, and drag your finger to another part of the screen. You can do this to rearrange the apps on your home screen or scroll up and down on an app or a web page. Uh, double tapping is when you rapidly touch the screen twice in a row in the same spot. And with an iPhone, you can unlock it by double tapping the screen. We'll be going on to some touchscreen basics. So the home button is the button that you press to go to your home screen. And some smartphones like that are newer, versions of iPhones 
don't have one. And if your device doesn't have a home button, instead you can swipe with your finger from the bottom to the top of your screen to go back to the home screen. A uh, lock screen. To turn on your device, either tap the home button or the screen. Your lock screen will usually show the time and the date, which is in red, your battery percentage, which is highlighted in orange, the connection to internet, which is highlighted in yellow, uh, if you're using data, which is green, and any notifications if you have them. Uh, the lock screen. So if you tap the screen twice or swipe up, you should see a screen that asks you to enter a passcode, uh, a password, or a pattern, depending on what you have set up for your phone. And you enter the code to unlock your device. Camera. So to access the camera without unlocking your phone, tap the little camera icon in the bottom corner of your screen and then swipe up to open the camera application. Um, in the case of an emergency, tap the emergency or emergency call button to make a 911 call without having to unlock your phone. The home screen is uh, what shows when your phone is unlocked. And again, you can see your battery life, the Wi-Fi and data at the top, as well as the time. The main thing on your home screen would be the apps you have installed. And apps are the square icons that you see on your screen. They all have different purposes and different functions. You can get more apps, both free and paid, from the App Store or Play Store. To use the apps, just press on them with your finger and it'll open up. And to browse through all available apps on your device, you can swipe to the left or the right. Folders are a way of grouping and organizing your apps. And to create a folder, hold down on an app that you want in the folder, and then you can drag it over another app that you want in the folder so that they like turn into a folder. Um, you should see an outline around the app underneath the one you are dragging. Then take your finger off the app and the folder should open up with those two apps inside of it. If you want to add more apps to the folder, then you can press and hold any app that you want to add and then drag it over the folder you want to add it into. And yeah. When you look on your home screen, uh, a folder would be the same size as an app, but you'd be able to see the apps that you have in the folder in the small square. Once you press on the folder, it will open up so that you can see the apps that you've put inside of it. And you can name folders so that you know what type of apps you put inside of it. To name it, just press and hold where the name of the folder is. And then a keyboard should appear and then you can type in whatever you like. On the picture, the name of the folder is highlighted in yellow but it's a little bit hard to see so uh, yeah if you have more than an, a certain number of apps in your folder then you can see like dots at the bottom of the folder these represent how many pages are in your folder and each page has apps in them you can swipe to the left to reveal more apps Closing apps. Um, on iPhones, if you simply press the home button, uh, well, it won't close the app that you were using. It'll run in the background and drain your battery and use data. And 
So in order to close an app on an iPhone, uh, on the home screen of your phone, if you don't have a physical home button, uh, drag your finger from the bottom of the screen to around the middle to reveal all currently open apps. And then to close them, swipe your finger upwards. On an Android, um, on the home screen, you'll see three buttons at the bottom of your screen. The button to the right of the home button is the back button. So it'll take you back one action. And the button to the left of the home button will show you all apps that are currently open. To close an app, press the X button in the corner, or you can tap it and then swipe to the right or the left. Or if you wanted to just close all the apps, you can just tap close all. Um, the control panel. If you hold your finger on the top of your screen and drag it down, you'll get quick access to the control panel. And it has a few icons that you can enable or change if you want, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or screen brightness. If you press and hold any of those icons, it can expand and then you can see other features. To go back to your home screen, swipe up from the bottom of the screen. And if your button, if your phone has a button, then uh, just press it once and it'll bring you back to the home screen. Uh, so now we'll be, we'll be going on to more touch screen tips. Screen sensitivity. So if you want your touch screen to be more or less responsive to your touch, you can change the sensitivity level um, on iPhones. In order to change it, you would open your settings, um, head to the accessibility tab, um, touch, and then assistive touch. If you drag the circle on the line to the right to make your screen more sensitive, and then you can drag it to the left to make it less sensitive. On Android, you go to your settings, accessibility, dexterity, and, and interaction, uh, the assistant menu, and then toggle on. And then there, you should be able to alter the touchpad size and cursor size and speed. Um, you can press enable interaction control to turn off screen rotations, block certain notifications and block touch interaction for an area of the screen that you select. So this can simplify the use of your smartphone. Um, again, you go, um, you open settings, go to accessibility, um, go to dexterity and interaction go to interaction control, and then toggle on. Zooming in and out. To zoom in and enlarge the items on your screen, put two fingers on your screen, like your pointer finger and your thumb, and then move them apart from each other. And to zoom out, you can put your fingers on the screen, and then move them closer to each other. Uh, a spacebar trick is when you're using your keyboard on your screen, if you want to edit your sentence, you can press and hold the spacebar and then drag your finger to wherever you want to edit the sentence. Shortcut to access camera. Uh, instead of finding and tapping your camera app, you can quickly open the camera by double tapping the home button on Android or swiping down from the top of the screen to access it from your control panel on both Android and iPhone. Um, switching tabs. When you open Google Chrome on a phone, you won't see your tabs like on a computer or a tablet because it's a smaller device. 
So in order to get to the tab or the page you want, press the little square on the bottom right of the Chrome screen and the number in the square will represent how many tabs are open. And then you will be able to see all the different tabs you have open as well as a plus sign in case you want to open another tab. Uh, just tap on whatever tab you want to go on or tap on the plus sign if you want to open a new tab. And you can press the X if you want to delete a tab. Thank you for listening.